Hello, welcome one, welcome all to your lab instructions for running up a flight of stairs. All right. Again, if you do not have the ability to run up the flight of stairs and just slowly go up, I do not want to see anyone get injured by this. All right. So if you want to be competitive because you have, to have that heart, then that's uh, your own desire. Okay. So the whole purpose of this lab, guys, is just to calculate out the average power output of yourself running up a flight of stairs. Okay. And I also want you to factor in the absolute uncertainty in your calculations. All right, so the exercise that we just did uh, in the previous time block. So what do you know? What do you know so far? All right. Um, first off, you know your mass, kind of. Now, if you know your mass in pounds, that's okay, because whatever you have in pounds, uh, what is it, 2.2 pounds? Yeah, 2.2 LBS is equal to 1 kilogram. All right. So if you know that you're 150 pounds, let's say, then you take your 150 pounds and you divide by 2.2 and that'll get you to your measurement in kilograms. Because that's the first measurement I need from you, your mass. OK, so your mass is whatever value plus minus 0 0.05 kilograms. In fact, I'm just going to leave some space in front of here so that uh, you know what I need from you guys for your data collection. There you go. Mostly scripted, but not 100% scripted. Right. So you have a, a measurable mass. And again, the hack for that is that if you know your measurement in pounds, then divide by 2.2. Because one kilogram is equal to roughly 2.2 pounds. Meaning that your mass, you may not know the number exactly. So in other words, I'm just going to throw a random number in here. Let's say that you have a mass of 23 kilograms. The uncertainty, which we'll just keep as a class standard, is that you're off by probably half a kilogram from the correct answer. Okay, Roughly off by a pound. The time that it takes for you to run up and down a flight of stairs, if you recall from the first day, the time for you to start, start a stopwatch, there's probably a delay of a tenth of a second. And when you stop your stopwatch afterwards, there's probably a delay of another tenth of a second again. So the total uncertainty of you operating your stopwatch is going to be around 0 0.2 seconds. All right. So in other words, when you state your final answer for your time, don't give me to the nearest hundredth. If it took, you know, 5.4 seconds to run up your flight of stairs, that's fine. So 5.4 seconds plus minus 0 0.2 seconds. Lastly, the height of your staircase, make sure you explain to me and tell me how you determined the height of your staircase. All right. Some people, what they do is they measure the height of one flight of stairs and then multiply that error through. And if you did that, then, then make sure you factor that in. On the other hand, if you had, for example, uh, a tape measure and you were very careful with it, then your errors would be rather small. So for the height of, of your staircase, just give me some reasonable measurement on it. Just briefly write down, you know, how you estimated the height of your stairs. Okay, everyone's going to have their own method of doing it. Just tell me briefly how you arrived to it. So I'm just going to give another hypothetical answer. Let's say that I got an answer of 2.35 meters. But again, because of my errors on my measurement, I could be as far off as plus minus 0 0.1 meter after all my errors all right so then as long as you explain to me how you did that you lifted up the ruler you know two and a half times and the second time you lift it up every time you lifted it you're probably off by a centimeter so that's why your error here is probably going to be off by 0.1 meter if you want to round that to 2.4 meters that's fine with me as well all right just give me an explanation so just explain how you did it just briefly one sentence Okay, now let's transfer uh, these values onto the formula, all right? Power is equal to mass times gravitational field strength times height. The mass in this case over here is 23 kilograms. I know there's a bunch of questions. Uh, just let me just briefly explain this first, and then I'll answer the questions afterwards, okay? So a mass of 23 kilograms, your error is 0 0.5 kilograms. As for G, 9.81 newtons per kilogram. And we'll just accept this as our error plus minus 0 0.01 Newton per kilogram. The height, again, make sure it's in meters. Just give me a brief explanation of how you arrived to that number there. After all, I have no idea which flight of stairs you're running up in your house, so I, there's no way for me to fact check your measurements. So as long as it sounds reasonable about how you arrived to it and why you believe your error is, for example, 0 0.1 meter off, that's fine with me. I mean, if you believe that you're off by 0 0.2 meters because, you know, you had some really lousy uh, measurements, then by all means, explain it in there, and I'm totally fine with it. What I'm really interested in is on how you're revealing uh, your answer here. So once you sub everything in, 
and you calculate it through, tell me what your power is, plus minus a percentage error first, and then power measured in watts, plus minus what your error is, is in watts. All right, so I want your final answer in absolute uncertainty. Very similar to answering a question that looks like this one back here. Where is it? Right here, except that it's a bit more complicated because this is just multiplying two numbers. Meanwhile, for your lab, you're multiplying three numbers and then dividing it by yet another number. Okay, so you'll still multiply, 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 divide as you normally would. But with your errors, you have to add all four errors together. And before you add the errors, you need to go and do this number crunching first. So just show me that work. First, you'll give me an absolute uncertainty for your measurements. Show me how you converted all the absolute uncertainty into a percentage uncertainty. All right. And after you've done through that, go through your calculations and revert back to an absolute uncertainty. And that is the objective of this lab here. If there's a few questions first. Just remember that this is being recorded. Yes, one student who has the first question. Um, so I have a couple of questions. The first one is, uh, in the example, when we're multiplying, we have the percents, right? And we add yeah. them. Uh, if it's dividing, do we subtract? No, you always add. Errors only get worse. All right. And um, another one for the explanation. Is it like a mathematical one? Or like a written explanation? Say a couple of sentences. Oh, uh, for the height? Um, just one sentence telling me how you got to it. If you want to show me math behind it, that's fine. I just want to see that you you thought about why your error was what it is. All right. For some people, okay, they the last one, uh, they're doing some hardcore people. estimations. Tell me the why that hardcore estimation exists, and I'll accept it. No big deal. Okay. So just a brief right. explanation one, of one more why you got to that answer, and I'm fine with that. Yes. Another question. All right. Um, so do, does it matter if you run up the stairs, walk up? Does it matter, right? Okay, so another student asked me about this. Do we go up to uh, the two flights of stairs or only one flight? Oh, sorry, it's different than yours. Um, again, yeah, yeah. I, we run up or walk up, I, I, I don't know what's happening in wherever you're living, all right? For some people, they live, you know, in a situation where I kind of live at, where I do have staircases, so you can go up the staircases. Or let's say that I only had one floor of here, all right, in my complex. In that case, if I want to go to a local park and go up those flight of stairs, that's fine. It, that's, that's okay. If there's an emergency exit with staircases, Take those as your flight of stairs. Okay, so everyone's going to have their own story behind it. One flight of stairs or two flight of stairs, that's totally up to you. And I think the last question is, do we run or walk? Just be safe about it. Okay, I don't want anyone to yeah. lose any teeth through this experiment. So if your health says that you cannot run up there, then walk up there. You're not going to lose any marks if you didn't run up. But if you want to be competitive with you and your friends in this classroom because you know a few people and you want it to be a competition who has a greater power output, then go ahead, calculate away and see who has the great output. But then again, you're just trusting each other's calculations. Okay, so that's the answer for that. Yes, another student has another question. Um, I'm just a little bit confused about the measuring of the of the height of the staircase. Or the so, okay. like, um, like just the measurements that you're showing there, like the plus minus 0.5 centimeters. Yeah. Is that like, oh, so let's. Okay. Um, 0.5 centimeters, don't need to worry about that. Uh, 0.5 centimeters was with my other, with uh, the original run where uh, I want you to be super careful about it. But as I said, as long as you tell me reasonably how you got to your plus minus error, that's all that matters to me. Okay, so for your version, just explain like how you got to your plus minus. So if you think that your measurements are off oh, by 10 okay. centimeters, tell me why you think you're off by 10 centimeters. If you think that you can be spot on plus minus 0.5, tell me how you were that careful in getting to it. Well, because like for example, like let's say if I were to just measure the one staircase and then multiply it by however many staircases, would yeah. I just multiply my uh, yeah. error you by might. 10? Yeah. Your error may increase by 10 times. That's the problem about lifting it that many times. And that's why I said yeah. everyone's going to have their own way of doing it. All right. Everyone's going to have their own way of doing it. So just tell me how you did, got to your answer, and I'm okay with that. Uh, there was another question. So for all measurements, we have to have our own uncertainties. Um, the, you know what? The only one that which you have full control over is the height. All right. So as, as long as you explain to me how you got to that uncertainty, that's, uh, that's fine with me. The other, the other ones I just want to keep as control is time. OK, 
Okay, we all have, will have a time error of plus minus 0.2 seconds, and all of our masses will be as far off as 0 0.05 kilograms. Truth is, I have no idea what any of your masses are, so you could even make it up and I wouldn't be the wiser. Okay, so I'm more concerned about how you're revealing your answers in the lab than you conducting it yourself. That's the benefit of this lab here, right? I don't have to physically be with you guys or even witness who's doing it. I'm more interested in, is the data that you're collecting and analyzing it, is it grammatically correct according to these rules? And don't forget guys that your final measurement, it should be rounded to one sig fig. So in other words, if you had one, two, three point four five six watts, plus minus 0.12 watts, because that's that was your absolute uncertainty, which is what this is, okay? So if you thought it was that, then make sure you just round it to one sig fig, one sig fig one sig fig, okay? And yeah, the one, two, three, four, five, six would just be rounded around 120-ish because you're around 50 watts in this case over here. I think that's that one last thing I forgot to mention about. I think a lot of people will be tempted to write this down as five times 10 to the ton to the one watt. That is correct, but it's messy because now you're gonna force the other side to write it down as 1.2 times 10 to the two watts. And if you write it down like that and submit it in, you will receive full marks, it's fine. I have no problems at all with that. But in general, as a scientist, we already know that uncertainties are going to be one sig fig. So in other words, if you see a plus minus 50 watts, you as a scientist already know that the person over here has already rounded appropriately because they knew they couldn't trust the nearest hole. So it's around 120-ish. That's why you'll see that the three has disappeared. Okay, so that's one thing that I wanted to point out as well. Any other questions about the lab before I stop the recording? I'm a little confused with one student's statement of I won't be here though. Um, if it's related to the lab, then sure, ask away. If it's a personal thing, then I'll answer it after I stop the recording. Uh, just double checking. Uh, the second lab is due Tuesday, right? Yes, this lab is due Tuesday. So this one is due Tuesday. And we just finished both of them over the weekend. Yes. And there's a third one to do if you have time for that third one, which is melting ice cubes. Wait, there's this. Oh, God. Yeah, if you want to. Okay. Uh, someone's asking, can I just use the 0.5 centimeters? Now, that 0.5 centimeters is assuming that you're very careful with your setup. So, yes, you could use that as well. Okay. So, if you have, like, one of those really nice rulers, I don't have one here with me, uh, those nice metal ones, then you're probably very certain to the nearest half a centimeter. All right, so you just, just tell me what you use as your equipment, and that's why you're confident in this measurement, and I'm totally fine with it. Everyone's going to have their own variances. Okay, other student, yes. So when we are explaining the um, uncertainty for the height, are we explaining about the, in, like the, the instrument we use for measuring, or like are we explaining like the stair itself? Um, how we got to our answer. The, the instrument you're using probably matters as well, but how you got to that answer for the height. So I can explain from like both perspectives, like because of my instrument and then like the stairs like going rolling and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just briefly okay. one sentence or two. You don't have to give me a paragraph. Just right. briefly explain how you got to your measurements. All right, so if you got, you know, 1.2 meters for your height, plus minus 0 0.1 meter, tell me why you think it's 0 0.1 meter. For some people, they think that when they're doing the measurements, they're off by a centimeter each time. So after 10 flights, they're off by 10 centimeters. That's fine. I'll take it. All right. So as long as there's something, some explanation behind how you got to it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna question that part. And does the units matter? Like, can we use meters, or would we? Use oh yeah, centimeters? it does matter. Remember that for everything in physics, always stick with MKS. Okay? All right. Always stick with MKS. Otherwise, your values will be out of control. I have students who gave me the answer and they said that their power was 10,000 watts. Like what human being can generate 10,000 watts? And again, you already know that 740 watts is a horsepower already, all right? So for those of you guys that train and work out, maybe you can hit that number there if you're carrying something heavy behind you as well. That is possible. But I don't expect anyone to be anywhere close to a horsepower. So when you get some number like 10,000 watts, you knew you made a mistake. It probably was only just 10 watts, okay? Uh, yes, another student had their hand raised up. Yeah, that's me. Um, once we have like our final height plus uncertainty, and let's just say it's in centimeters because we do use like a, a ruler. Yeah, yeah. Can convert we just to? Convert to meters. Uh, Done. And for the height and the uncertainty, both of them convert to meters, right? Yes, 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 okay. yes.
Good, thank you. Yeah, it should be in meters when you do your calculations. This H needs to be in meters. That is true. Um, hold on, let me just see if there's anything else written down here. For the third lab, do we have any calculations? If you're talking about the third lab where you're boiling water, uh, the instructions are listed in your course pack. Again, this is optional, but I do encourage for you, if you guys have the time, please do it, page 44. I will tell you what the answers are on Monday, but again, sometimes it's better just to witness it for yourself to see how obscure this curve is. Okay, It's not going to be what you would predict. It's something completely out of this world. And I'll explain the science behind why it's all bizarre next week as well. Okay, so um, for the first lab, I'll, I'll answer your first lab question afterwards. Again, this is a recording. I just want to answer all possible questions with regards to this lab here. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm as strong as multiple horses. Okay, is, if that's it, then I'm going to stop this recording. Oh, sorry, someone else had their hand up. Um, for the mass, should we round to one decimal or? Yes. Okay. All right. I mean, even you wrote down 23 kilograms plus minus 0.5. I'm okay with that as well. There are other things that I, I just don't have time to explain to you guys here, unfortunately. Um, maybe I'll explain it right now. Okay. Why 23 kilograms? If you own a scale upstairs right now or in your house and it's a digital scale, it'll probably tell you something like that. Your mass is 45 kilograms. Now, is it really 45? In general, the inside is calibrated to the nearest tenth of a measurement, or at least to the nearest half. So it knows whether to, to round up or round down. So in other words, if your scale, you know, if it's digital, it always shows numbers like this, right? Zero, uh, zero kg, that's how they are. So if you end up getting a number like 23, which would look like this, well, you're missing that digit over here. That's a mystery. So internally, it should be calibrated to plus minus half of the least significant digit. So because this is a whole, Half of a whole is plus minus 0 0.5. And that is actually the real reason why I said 0 0.5 over here. Do you need to know that for this lab? No, you don't, but that's why I chose that number there. Okay, for those that are really curious. So if you write down 23, I'm okay with that. If you write down 23.2, I'm gonna let it slide because I know that I'm abbreviating a lot of things here. Okay, so there is a lot of lenience here. A more important concern about that you're showing your work converting your percentage to your, sorry, converting your absolute uncertainties into your percentage uncertainties, and then finally rounding appropriately at the end. That's what this stuff is all about. Again, round appropriately. Make sure your final answer is one sig fig. So if your uncertainty looks like this, your final answer should look like that. If your uncertainty looks something weird like this, your final answer should look like this. And if your uncertainty looks like that, again, you can't be exactly 45.6 watts off. How do you know you're that off? Because if you were that exactly that much off, why not just add or subtract your original measurement and get your proper answer spot on? This is an approximation, so that's why you'll notice over here, this is an approximation as well. You know that your output is roughly 120 watts, and you could be as far off as 50 watts because your gathered collected data was lousy. That's okay, I'll totally accept it. It's not a big deal. Uh, Givens and uncertainties are all together, just like how they're listed right over here. So in other words, you'll tell the measurement, like mass is equal to a number plus minus 0 0.5 kilograms. Any other last questions about this before I stop this recording? Yes. So uncertainties and final measure are in different sections? Uh, you have your uncertainties. You start off with this, right? This is your, this is your givens. And then afterwards, you're going to do all your calculations afterwards. OK, so final measure is the same thing as uncertainties? Oh, no, your final measure is your final answer at the end of the day. Oh, like the power, right? Final answer, yeah. Final okay. answer, power, measure, and watts, yeah. OK. All right, so you. final measure is your final answer. OK, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I mean, I could rename that here as well, your final answer. Your final answer should have an uncertainty that's only one sig fig. I've emphasized that before, and that's why we're rounding as appropriately. So these are just examples down below. Is the height from ground to second floor a factor of delta height? Yes, it is. Okay. I don't know what your height is, so just tell me that number. So in other words, if your height is 2.31 meters, sure. If your height is 2.31 meters, and if your error is 0 0.05 because you were using a tape measure, just say that, and I will accept it. There's nothing wrong with that. I know that everyone has a different circumstance in the setup of their house, so everyone's going to have a different way of measuring. Okay, 
For more episodes like this, make sure you like, click, and subscribe. And how about I just tell you one more fun fact about stairs? Believe it or not, when they build stairs, they got to be careful on how they set up their flights. If every step is exactly the same, you'll be fine going up the flight of stairs. But even if one of the steps in the stairs is off by even an inch, you're probably going to trip. That's one of the problems they have in one of the New York flights. I forgot which emergency exit or which uh, exit from the subway, but one step over there was off by an inch compared to the rest. And you can watch a YouTube video on, on, on people that randomly slip from it. I think one in every 10 people trip at that step because our brains are so hardwired in knowing our pace that we should be going up that if you miss your stride, even by an inch, it throws you off and you may end up falling. So when you design your staircases, make sure each flight is very small in their air. That's all I have to share with you as a bonus activity, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.